So in the next section, I'd like to talk about mRNA capping. So just to give you a little bit of an overview of the eukaryotic mRNA cap, it has an, an inverted M7G here um, and a triphosphate linkage. And then the thing I'd like to focus on is here is these two prime positions of these sugars at the first base and the second base. So when there's no methyl group here, it's just an OH, we call that structure cap zero. Cap zero is an intermediate in the production of a cap, but it's not found at all in any eukaryotic mature messages. So 100% of eukaryotic messages have a methyl group at this first position, and we call that cap one. And about 50% of mRNAs have a methyl group at this point, it's called cap two. And so we think that nature thinks that these two methyl, methylation positions are really important. There's also another additional cap that's been recently appreciated, which we call M6AM. And so that is at the N6 position of adenosine here, there's a, an additional methylation event in addition to this methylation to make cap one. And there's a really nice paper that I recommend to you from our collaborator, Sammy Jaffrey, in Nature recently, where they showed that um, M6AM was very prevalent in up to 30% of caps in eukaryotic messages, and that they had evidence that it regulated translational initiation and mRNA stability. And I'll tell you a little bit about that and show you some data a little bit further on in the talk. So what are the functions of these caps? So caps are known to be functioned in nuclear export, in splicing, in turnover, protein synthesis, decapping. Um, they're also thought to be important for self, non-self recognition. So cap zero is recognized as foreign. And um, there are proteins, for example, IFITs, which recognize improperly methylated caps. Um, that binding of these IFITs um, reduces by our initiation by translation initiation factors. Cap one methylation also modulates the binding to these pattern recognition receptors that I told you about earlier in the talk. Um, and the role of cap two is largely unexplored because it was not possibly to, possible to easily generate cap two RNAs until very recently. And I'll show you some methodology that we developed at TriLink to do that. So basically we don't really know what cap two does which is exciting. All right, so viruses think that the cap is important. So many viruses possess a cap one structure, especially um, cytoplasmic RNA viruses. And um, they, many viruses that replicate in the cytoplasm also encode a methyl transferase, which is adding that methyl group to make the mRNA cap one. There's certain viruses that actually go and steal the caps off of eukaryotic messages and splice them onto their own messages to achieve cap one structures. And when you block the methyl transferase activity of many viruses that are RNA viruses in the cytoplasm, that blocking of that formation of cap one leads to attenuation of that virus. So all of this suggests that the capping state of the mRNA is important and that viruses have gotten smart to this. So there's a series of proteins called IFITs, one through five, and these recognize um, RNAs with a five prime triphosphate or CAP zero, and that they bind to them and sequester them from the translation machinery and compete for binding by CAP binding protein. Now interesting, it, it's been shown that IFITs reduce binding, uh, or have reduced binding for CAP one and CAP two. And for example, when you take a, co a pox virus or coronavirus, um, the host restriction to that virus is blocked by CAP1 methylation. So if you methylate those viruses, then they be the cell becomes permissive for those viruses. The most recently studied group out of the IFIT group is IFIT5, and it was shown to bind to 5' prime monophosphate, 5' prime triphosphate, and CAP0, but not to CAP1. So the capping state of the mRNA is determining which of the pattern recognition receptors in the cell that are binding to these different RNAs. So there's another pair of uh, cytosolic sensors called RIG-I RIG and MDA5. 
and they also care about Cap1. So Rig I is not activated by Cap1 double-stranded RNAs. And the attenuation of coronavirus replication by blocking of methyl transferases is relieved in the absence of MDA5, suggesting that it plays a role in MDA5 binding. 